Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today in English Folio, we are going to discuss another 10 questions from the morning shift of English literature. So if you haven't subscribed our channel yet, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss our latest updates. Okay, so let's check out our questions. First question is, arrange the following in the chronological order of publication. A. Chrome Yellow B. Sons and Lovers C. Mrs. Dalloway and D. A portrait of the artist as a young man. Choose the correct answers from the options given below. Option 1. B. A. D. C. Option 2. A. B. D. C. Option 3. A. C. B. D. And Option 4. B. D. A. C. So, Chrome Yellow. Chrome Yellow is the first novel by the British author Aldous Huxley. It is a satire of its time and it was published in 1921. Sons and Lovers is a 1930 novel by D. H. Lawrence. It's a semi-autobiographical novel and it can be viewed as a psychological study of the familial and love relationships of a working class English family. Mrs. Dalloway is a 1925 novel by Virginia Woolf. It details a day in the life of Clarissa Dalloway, a fictional high society woman. And finally, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man is the first novel of the Irish writer James Joyce. It's a consular roman written in a modernist style. It traces the religious and intellectual awakening of the protagonist named Stephen de Dallas. It was published in 1916. So if we arrange them in a chronological order, it will be um, Sons and Lovers, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, Chrome Yellow and finally Mrs. Dalloway. So the right option for this question is option number 4, B, D, A, C. Okay, moving on to the next question. Which one of the following statement is appropriately true of Harold Pinter's place? Option 1. Menace is in the air and it leads to bloody violence. Option 2. Menace is in the air and it is realized through the female characters. Option 3. Menace is in the air but it is not pinned down or explained. And option 4. Menace is in the air and anarchy follows in a systematic manner. So Harold Pinter was a British playwright, screenwriter, director and actor. He is a Nobel Prize winner. He was one of the most influential modern British dramatists with a writing career that spanned more than 50 years. His major plays are The Birthday Party, Homecoming and Betrayal. Pinter's plays are typically characterized by implications of threat and a strong silence. There is even an expression named Pinteresque to define the characteristic features of Pinter's plays. So if you take the example of the play Birthday Party, we can see that Menace is in the air from the beginning of the play and it lasts till the end of the play. And there is no kind of explanation for this Menace. So here the right option or the right explanation for Pinter's play is option number 3. Menace is in the air but it is not pinned down or explained. Next question. Which among the novels includes a questionnaire for the readers? such as, do you like the story so far, yes or no? First option, Mandisa by John Fowles. Option number two, Waterland by Graham Swift. Option number three, Snow White by Donald Bartley. And option number four, If on a Winter's Night, A Traveller by Italo Calvino. So Mantisa is a novel by British author John Fowles, published in 1982. It consists entirely of a presumably imaginary dialogue in a writer's head between himself and an embodiment of the muse Urato, after he wakes a music in a hospital bed. Waterland is a 1983 novel by Graham Swift, set in Fenland of Eastern England. Snow White by Donald Bartholin is a postmodernist novel which was published in 1967. The book inverts the fairy tale of the same name by highlighting the form and by discussing the different expectations and compromises the characters make to survive in their own world. This is done through fragmentary rhetoric and discourse by shifting the perspectives from the seven dwarfs or Snow White herself as well as the wicked stepmother. If on a Winter's Night, A Traveller is a 1979 novel by Italian writer Italo Calvino. It's a postmodern narration in the form of a frame story. It's about the reader trying to read a book called If on a Winter's Night, A Traveller. So here, the novel which contains a questionnaire for the readers is option number 3, Snow White by Donald Bartholin. Okay, which one of the following Sherlock Holmes stories refers to a significant event in English history? Option 1, The Musgrove Ritual. Option 2, The Speckled Band. Option 3, The Solitary Cyclist. And Option 4, The Red-Headed Lake. 
we know that Sherlock Holmes is a fictional private detective created by the British author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So uh, his novel The Musgrove Ritual was published in 1893. The Speckle Man was published in 1892. The Solitary Cyclist was published in 1903 and The Red-Headed League was published in 1891. Among this novel, the novel Musgrove Ritual has many allusions to the event, people, places and objects connected with the escape of Charles II to France and his restoration in 1660 as the King of England. So after the final is uh, royalist defeat of the English civil war against Cromwell's new model army at the battle of Worcester on 3rd September 1651 Charles II was forced to flee famously avoiding the detection by hiding in an oak tree in a wood that was being searched by the parliamentarian soldiers a reward of around $1000 was announced for the information leading to Charles capture but relying on the support of a network of royalist gentry Charles attempted to escape to Wales then to Bristol and then to Charmouth disguised as an loping lover and finally he rode to East Shoreham from where he took a coal boat to France on 15th October 1651 so uh, the illusions of this historical event can be viewed on the novel the musgrove ritual by Arthur Conan Doyle so the right option for this question is option number 1 the musgrove ritual next question Macaulay's minute of 1835 sought to a promote european literature and science among the natives b impart knowledge of english literature and science through translated text c encourage branches of native learning by more useful studies and option d stop expenditure on the publication of oriental works and spend funds only on english education choose the correct answer from the options given below option 1 a and d only option 2 b and d only option 3 a and c only and option 4 b and c only so the minute by thomas babington macaulay of 1835 argued that the support for the publication of books in sanskrit and arabic should be withdrawn support for the traditional education should be reduced to funding for madrasa at delhi and the hindu college at banaras but students should no longer be paid to study at these establishments the money released by these steps should instead go to the fund education in western subjects with english as the language of instruction so macaulay was never a fan of vernacular learning so here the right option seems to be option a and d promote european literature and science among the natives and to stop expenditure on the publication of oriental works and to spend funds only on english education moving on to the next question the deductive method differs from the inductive method in drawing its conclusions from 1 verification 2 particular instances 3 applications and 4 general truths we know that inductive reasoning is a method of reasoning in which the premises are viewed as supplying some evidence but not full assurance for the truth of the conclusion so here we are analyzing particular instances to reach a general truth whereas in deductive reasoning it is a process of drawing conclusion based on the premises that are generally assumed to be truth so here we are reaching at particular instances by analyzing a general truth so it is a top down reasoning so here in this question the right answer is option number 4 general truths okay next question which two of the following inspired the rise of periodical essay a robert burton b Francis Rebellius C Francis Bacon T Michel de Montaigne Choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below Option 1 C and A only Option 2 A and B only Option 3 C and D only and Option 4 B and D only Now Robert Burton was an English scholar writer and Anglican clergyman whose anatomy of melancholy is a masterpiece of style and a valuable index to the philosophical and psychological ideas of the time uh, francis rabelais was a french renaissance writer physician renaissance humanist monk and greek scholar he has historically been regarded as a writer of satire the grotesque body jokes and songs now francis bacon we all know was an english renaissance statesman a philosopher best known for his promotion of the scientific method He wrote essays on a wide range of styles from plain and unadorned to epigrammatic forms. Finally, Michel de Montaigne, also known as the Lord of Montaigne, 
was one of the most significant philosophers of French Renaissance. He is known for popularizing essays as a literary genre. Now, uh, we all know that periodical essay is an essay published in a magazine or a journal as a series. So, the two names that are most connected to the periodical essay is Francis Bacon and Michel de Montaigne. So, the right option for this question is option number 3. The next question we have is a match the following. So, we have a list of authors and a list of texts. So, in list 1, we have A. Thomas Pynchon B. Howard Jacobson C. Anthony Burgess D. John Berger in the list of texts, we have G, V, J, and slash F. Choose the correct answers from the options given below. So, novel J is a dystopian novel by Howard Jacobson, published in 2014. It's a more recent novel, and it is set decades ahead in future and poses unsettling questions about our senses. Novel G is a 1972 novel by John Burgle, set in a pre-First World War Europe and its protagonist named G is a Don Juan or a Casanova-like character who gradually comes to a political consciousness after his misadventures across the continent. Novel V is a 1963 novel by Thomas Pynchon. It describes the exploits of a discharged US Navy sailor named Benny Profane, his reconnection in New York with a group of pseudo-Bohemian artists known as the Whole Thick Crew and the quest of an aging traveller named Herbert Stenzel to identify and locate the mysterious entity he knows only by the name We. M F is a 1971 novel by the English author Anthony Burgess. A darkly surreal comedy of dazzling linguistic inventiveness, M F is an outrageous tale of blood, lust and the machinations of fate. So here, if we connect the list of authors with the text, it would be something like this. Thomas Pynchon, novel We. Howard Jacobson, novel J, Anthony Burgess, novel N slash F, and John Berger, novel G. So, the correct option here is option number 2, A2, B3, C4, and D1. Next question, who makes the following speech in Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot? Astride of a grave and a difficult birth, down in the hole, lingeringly, the grave digger puts on the forceps. Option 1. Estragon, 2. Lucky, 3. Latimer, and 4. Poso. Latimer is a character in Waiting for Godot who is an old derelict, dressed like a tramp. Along with his friend Estragon, he comes to a bleak, desolate place to wait for Godot. So, Estragon is Latimer's companion of many years who is overly concerned with his physical needs but is repeatedly told by Latimer that above all, they must wait for Godot. Poso is a traveling man dressed rather elaborately. He arrives driving another man forward by means of a rope around the latter's neck. That is Lucky. So Lucky is a faithful uh, slave of Poso. He absolutely obeys Poso in everything. So these are the characters are waiting for Godot. But the character who specifically utters this sentence is Latimer, option number three. So the right option for this question is option number 3, Latimer. The final question we have for today is, which two rivers are mentioned by Andrew Marvel at the beginning of To His Quai Mistress? A. The Ganges, B. Thames, C. Humber, and D. The Jhelum. Choose the correct answer from the options given below. Option 1, A and D only. Option 2, A and B only. Option 3, A and C only. And option 4, C and C only. To His Coy Mistress is a cavalier poem written by the English author and politician Andrew Marvel, either during or just before the English entranum. It was published posthumously in 1681. This poem is considered one of the Marvel's finest and possibly the best recognized Carpe Diem poem in English. So, the two rivers mentioned at the beginning of this poem is the Ganges and Humber. So, the right option here is option number 3, A and C only. Okay folks, so we have come to the end of this discussion. I hope this video was helpful and thank you so much for listening and stay tuned for our next update.